Okay, so I saw Endgame a while back, and I've wanted to do this, but I decided to wait a while to, first of all, let my hype drain, and let a few more people actually see the movie, because this is going to have spoilers out the ass. So, it's time. We might as well talk about it. End game. Let me start by saying that is a damn good movie. And you absolutely should watch it. It is really good. It is a culmination of everything that they've built over the years. And it's everything we wanted. Everything I wanted, too. There was very little Brie Larson that was so fucking good. Seriously, she was like a fucking side note. She was in the movie for like, what, 15 goddamn minutes? She's in there a little bit at the beginning. She pisses off through the whole movie, comes back at the very end, doesn't do much. Thanos bitch slaps her out of the screen, and then she's gone again. It was beautiful. It was just beautiful. Makes me think that those uh, rumors about second cuts, they might have been, uh, they might have been true then. <laughs> And, as you know, whenever you do anything with time travel, there's some issues. Continuity problems, there's issues. Now, according to the way they explained it in the movie, if you travel through time, you don't actually change your future, you simply create a branch reality or a parallel universe where it it happened and it was different okay so their their way to correct this was to go back in time and return the stones to where they took them from to change the future right i mean if you're here and you're actually watching a, a review of the movie with spoilers in it i'm gonna i'm just gonna assume that you you saw the movie if you didn't see the movie, then I guess I'll I'll give you a quick rundown on it. One second, let me correct. Okay, Thanos snaps away half-life in the universe. The Avengers freak out. They go chop his head off. Okay, then they go back in time to get all the stones for the gauntlet so they can undo the snap five years in the future without erasing those five years, just bringing everybody back that died the five years ago in the snap because Tony Stark has a kid now, and he doesn't want to lose the little snot-nosed brat, I guess, okay? So, they do that, go up, snap, everything's fine, send Cap back, Cap doesn't come back, he grows old with his girlfriend, because, I don't know, he's fucking weird like that? It seems a little out of character, it just really seems like a, a way to write him out of the story since Chris Evans' contract was up. But that's the problem, right? Because they didn't just take the stones. And now everybody knows, and, and even the, the, the Marvel exec people have said, yeah, this is true. There is at least two branch realities now. There's the one where Captain America went back and changed fucking everything, and they don't explain how he got back to our reality, whatever. I don't, I don't give a shit. There's the one where Thanos came to the future, past Thanos came to the future, so they could fight him again, and on more even ground, and whoop his ass again, and Tony Stark could snap him out. Okay, so there's a, a reality out there that has no Thanos in it, because he came to our reality and died. So we've got two dead Thanos, they've got no Thanos, okay? And then there's the reality where Loki escaped with the Tesseract to do God knows what. But they also explain that Loki was under the influence of the Mind Stone at the time of the first Avengers movie. So without the, the scepter to corrupt his brain hole, maybe he'd be a good guy. But that's definitely where the TV show, the, the Loki show, is going to pick up. I'm like 99% sure on that. But everybody's talked about that. I've seen a lot of people mention that, a lot of people mention this, a lot of people talk about having the body of a god now, 
But here's the thing. Here's the thing that I haven't seen anybody talking about. Because they they were sneaky. They just slid it in. And everybody's like, yeah, okay, that's how it always worked. But that's how it's always worked in Marvel Comics. That's not how it's always worked in the MCU. We haven't seen anything like this yet. I'm about to tell you what it is. I'm just being a suspenseful asshole because I can and I'm clever. I feel like I figured something out and I, I got this. They just snuck in the multiverse. Now, I know that doesn't sound right because there's always been the multiverse in Marvel Comics. There's multiverse. There's a couple of them on here on my shirt, right? There's, there's that, you know. It's not much of a thing, it's not too important, but it is. Because the multiverse hasn't been in the MCU yet. It hasn't really been mentioned, it hasn't done anything with it. But now they've introduced it, cleverly. And it may not appear in the next phase, but I guarantee there will be mentions to it in the next phase. They're gonna build on it. Because now that they've introduced the multiverse, they can get into all manner of multiverse fucking shenanigans. Like, fuck. The, they pop out the universe where all the good guys are bad guys and they rule the world with an iron fist in justice style. Yeah, you know, I, I know, DC Marvel. I know. Trust me. I know. But those guys have been biting off each other since the dawn of fucking time. That's also a good way that they could introduce the X-Men. See, because in the Marvel Universe, they don't, they don't have mutants. They have genetic experiments. They have super soldiers here, whatever. They don't have mutants. But now that they've introduced the multiverse, all they got to do is rip open a portal to a multiverse that has mutants in it, bring them here, and boom, you've got the X-Men. It's also how they could introduce the Fantastic Four, because they have experience hopping multiverses in the comics, if I remember correctly. Which, I mean, my brain don't work like it used to, but I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Which would lead to Battle World. Which, in the comics, for those of you that don't know, was the death of of the multiverse, and Doctor Doom, the Fantastic Four's number one enemy, seizes the power of the Beyonder, rips people out of various multiverses, different realities, puts them all on one big-ass planet, and rules it as a god, using the Thor for, the Thor core, yeah, which is all of the Thors from the, Mar from the different universes as his police force, and that would make one hell of a movie. But that's way down the road. They're not going to be there anytime in the near future. Hell, I might even be dead by then. If I'm dead by then, some of you fucking whip out a Ouija board and you tell me about it, I right? And then, and then, tell me that I'm a goddamn genius and I was right. But yeah, you see people all over the place talking about the branch realities. This made a branch reality. That made a branch reality. That fart made a branch reality. But nobody said what it meant. It meant that, yes, there is now a multiverse. How long before people start traveling between it? How long before we see the Thanos core? The Black Order. The Cabal. The Illuminati. How long before all that shit starts coming through? How long before they do multiverse shenanigans? I am so excited. I am so ready for this. I'm also ready for them to get rid of Brie Larson because she is such a smug cunt and she doesn't deserve it. I'm sorry. Not really. Fuck you. And fuck your feelings. But yeah, it was a damn good movie. And Korg was in it. Fucking love Korg. Korg's my favorite. I was like, Shh, going into the movie. I told my wife, I said, hun, they gotta have Korg in this movie. If I don't see Korg and Meek, it's gonna drop one point on my rating. 
Even with even if it was a 10 out of 10 movie. No Corgan Meek, it's now a 9 out of 10. Too much Captain Marvel, it's a 5 out of 10. But it wasn't. There was no Captain Marvel, really. There was so much Corgan Meek. It was good. It was definitely a 9.5 out of 10. It had a little Captain Marvel. And she was very smug and unlikable. There were a couple of scenes that felt like they drug on just a hair too long. Uh, like the bit where Ant-Man was... The, the Hulk was taking a selfie with some kids and Ant-Man asked if they wanted to take a selfie with him. They obviously had no idea who he was. And that scene, it just drug on a little too long. It, it, it felt forced. By the end of it, I was like, all right, come on. Come on, there's other shit to do here. All right, it's cool. Mark Ruffalo and Hulk are the, they're the one and the same now. We've got Professor Hulk. Fine, that's cool. Push the story along. Just get behind it and just give it a shove. All right, we don't need to. We don't need to sit here on the selfie anymore. I'm done with that. I just like I've droned on too long about it. The scene droned on a, l a little too long. There were a couple of scenes like that that just kind of. It felt like they were just padding the runtime a little bit because they really wanted a long movie because nobody makes fucking long movies anymore, which I have, I have no problem with. It was damn good. It did not feel like it was a three-hour movie. Like, it, it wasn't slow and shitty. Like, everything felt deserved. God, the director's cut. You know how much shit they had to have cut? Damn! I know that like in uh, Infinity War, they cut the backstory to all of the Black Order, like Proxima Midnight and Ebony Maw and all them. So I wonder how much shit they cut out of Endgame. Makes you wonder. I've been thinking about just making this, this here video since I saw the movie on Saturday. Yeah. Sorry about that. Had a brain fart. That happens sometimes. No biggie. And you know what? That is America's ass.